So um, Philippine art before was then uh, categorized into three different things. Uh, there are religious art, Tolan Christian art, and the folk art. In religious art are those that are mostly commissions. And um, when they were commissioned, the priests, the friars uh, gave them a standard, a strict standard to um, follow in making a religious art. Lowland art, um, since after the conversion of native to Christianity, uh, people, the natives started to believe of on the Catholicism, but at the same time, they were also um, inclined to uh, draw or to make art that is um, inspired by their beliefs. So, but this beliefs or this kind of art were um, changed in somewhat. There were like, for example, Santo Nino became brown or Mama Mary became brown and something like that. So there was characteristic, the, the figures became uh, Filipino-like or native-like or looks like Filipino compared to the Western uh, look, looking, uh, you know, sculptures and artworks. So that's what you call lowland Christian art. And the folk art, this is art that is not related to any uh, religion. These are um, what they make for themselves or for, for those who commission or for those who need them. Um, examples for jewelry, uh, pots, uh, paintings also, but that is uh, later to um, discuss. And again, and like I said, uh, the friars were hired native Filipinos to uh, carry out their projects, sometimes for free, for free, like pla the plaza complex. And they also relocated the natives because because um, way way before they used to live apart and usually live in the mountain ranges and stuff. So uh, they called and they tried to move the natives to the center and like with town center, municipio and the crutches to like make them easy to manage, easy to educate and easy to call upon. So I am. So your religious, your religious art are designed most of the time uh, according to the prescriptions of the Spanish crown. So, um, establishments have imposed scale and then overall visual appeal. So, examples are your cruciform churches. Cruciform churches are um, churches that when you look at from the top, uh, it symbols uh, a form of a cross. And then your Hispanic churches, that is uh, Baroque, Baroque style. So Baroque style is um, ornate or very grandose and very, mm, what do you call it? Uh, complicated design. <laughs> Uh, later, I will make you see. So, um, Baroque church churches like San Agustin Church in Manila, Morong Church in Rizal, Puaay Church in Ilocos Norte, and Thomas Ibalbaneva Church in Miyago, Iloilo. So, if you've been to Manila or anywhere of these churches, one of the most um, Famous is the San Augustine Church in Manila uh, because not only is it the oldest church in the Philippines, but it is also the most grandeur and well-kept 
churches here in the Philippines. And actually a lot of uh, couples try to wed there because they think that, um, because San Agustin Church has been uh, fallen down before, has been tried to break and stuff, but it kept on being rebuilt. So, uh, uh, so couples like to get have their wedding there to symbolize um, to symbolize the unity and the long-lasting marriage. So, yeah, that is the popular um, idea of San Agustin Church. That's why a lot of people try to get married there. But the line is long in if you want to get married there, and then. But um, these churches were designed through the Baroque style, where you could see high, high ceilings, and then ornate. Uh, to be in, um, there are flowers or leaves or ferns that uh, that uh, design that has the design of the churches. But um, something about these churches are, even if they are European desi designed or inspired, um, because there is a lack of, or maybe not a lack, but maybe the, um, the what do you call this? Maybe the materials of building are not as, um, cheap as they were before. So Filipinos uh, used uh, local uh, raw materials like um, nara and other things like that. And also um, because the your Spain uh, it has different kinds of climates, right? So um, here we only have hot and cold, so um, definitely the the churches were made um, to um, adjust the local conditions or the environment con conditions here in the Philippines. So if I go to leaves later, I will discuss of the Meago Church. So we will be focusing on Spanish application in different aspects and new introductions to new forms of art. So we have architecture, sculpture and ornamentation, music, writing system, theater, dance, paintings, and the printing system. So during the Spanish era, there was the rise of classes and the privilege. And um, because of the rise of the classes, uh, the rise of classes, uh, and dito na si uh, Juan Luna, Jose Rizal, and other, other ilustrado that were able to uh, go to uh, Spain or to other countries to study. So um, they were able to study abroad and they they were also able to bring some education, some class, um, some uh, paintings, or they were able to make some paintings that are very prominent and famous here and also in abroad. So architecture, um, architecture uh, with uh, also in churches, you could also see saints. So uh, a lot of people like in Laguna uh, have, have been carving saints and other things to uh, put in churches, other for commission and stuff so those are essential for worship and most of them are also adorned in churches there were not only um also made for design but rather 
people also try to uh, touch them and make the sign of the cross. Uh, they uh, make it, it's like they're praising them or praying to them also. So um, that's your, um, the Filipinos, it has saints. And then uh, because of this also, the Filipinos were able to uh, practice and master the process of engraving, painting, and sculpting. So, uh, so much in fact that because the Filipino has lower labor, uh, uh, a lot of uh, people from abroad would uh, go here to have something engraved and it, it would be exported to the other countries. So uh, that was the use of the Philippines, the Filipinos here to, through Spain. So, but it started when uh, the friars brought Western models for local artists to copy. Uh, they are likely ivory or wood and it looks like classical and baroque models but um this saints or this models of sculpture uh as over time they uh they were influenced by their own culture the filipino the chinese culture and the western image started to fade no matter how much the friars or the spanish friars try to you know, uh, give strict standards to um, these models. Um, so the models or the sculpture and the figures, figurines or saints became a little bit more Chinese. You can see some, um, some, anong tawag dito? some faces of the saints that looks like Chinese or has um, little little eyes or some has darker color and also some of the churches would also have a uh, Chinese uh, Chinese motives or combined Western Chinese and Filipino motives so later we would you would see that. So, ayun, Chinese features like Nuestra Señora de Rosario in Bohol, which go yan, the Deity of Mercy of East Asian Buddhism. So, culture and ornamentation. So, like I said, santos or your saints, sculpture of saints are um, decorated in the churches and you put them on the altar or the tablo. And also each town has a patron saint and uh, sometimes people do not only flock to the saint but rather they also go uh, embellish the saint with rosettes, cross, pediments and and you also, they also put um, salamic columns or color and other colors and other colors. And sometimes they also dress up the Santo Nino, for example. So I, that's how um, the Santos are very important here in the Philippines or for the Filipinos. And then you also have the Cruces. These are 14 paintings or relief sculptures. That is uh, a series of reliefs. It shows Christ's crucifixion and resurre oh, the resurrection. So um, if, you, if you've been to a church and you can see like um, a painting or a glass mosaic, or a glass, a stained glass window, you can see there are uh, 14 different kinds of, of, of figures. You can see there that it actually tells the story of how um, Jesus Christ was um, uh, 
laid to the cross and then also came down from the cross and then reborn from death. So, ayan. You call it Via Crucis and that is also particular here in the Philippines. And then in other churches, you only do not have the Santos, but you also have, of course, the Holy Family. You have the Virgin Mary, uh, the four evangelists, um, St. Peter, St. John, St. Augustine, ba? <laughs> Sorry, I don't know the four evangelists, but the four evangelists proliferate in the ceilings, the walls. So they're like the one who, the, they're, they're the one that they say that before you enter heaven, you would see these people. Was that <laughs> Saint Matthew and Saint Luke? Oh, okay, am I bad? All right, Saint Matthew and Saint Luke. Okay, <laughs> and then you also have the Taal Basilica in Batangas or Saint James in Apollos Parish in Betis and Pampanga in Pampanga. So, ayun. And then, usually church altars here in the Philippines have carved figurative protrusions like reliefs with organic design or hammered silver or plateria. Or you call it plateria technique. So if you could some, I don't know, because before, during the Spanish era, the, the, uh, altars are adorned with gold or silver. Uh, but over time, people try to, you know, uh, steal the gold. So uh, some uh, don't have them anymore. But uh, yeah, um, some church altars still have um, gold um, engravings and gold uh, designs in the altar. Sometimes, because maybe there's no gold anymore, uh, churches now use um, elaborate wood engravings. Music. So, uh, music here in the Philippines are most of the time uh, inspired from the Western. But before the Western came, we also have our own uh, instruments, right? But um, because of the uh, Spanish colonization, uh, people forgotten about them or it's not very well discussed even in history class in elementary and even in high school, which is very, very sad. But um, even in churches, uh, we use um, the pipe organ, the violin, the guitar, and the piano. But um, here, in, but even if we use these musical instruments, um, we make our own songs in Filipino songs and we give it in a Filipino twist also. And then, but also because of the, um, the, the, inspiration from the church um uh in the industry of choirs boomed here in the philippines and they found out that um filipinos are really good at singing and also in choir singing Oops. so and then it also because uh people like to sing or the filipinos do remember your karaoke, even if you know um, it's noon, people turn on the karaoke and it will turn, and even it's like night, people still <laughs> like their karaoke. But um, in religious sense, you have also your passion or pabasa, uh, which is a biblical narration of Christ's passion, chant, some passion chanted and sometimes it is red. I somehow remember the song, but it's in the tip of my tongue, so I will not sing. 
<laughs> but uh because my mother like even in even in uh in rosary times or during novena you also uh sing the christ passion so i am and then And then uh, Pampanga, Ilocos, Bicol, and Iloilo, it, they also have Awit and a cori, Corrido, Corrido, which is musical forms chanted, but it is based on European literature. And then you have the Balitao. Balitao is not, is different from, it's not, Christian or Catholic, but rather these are love songs and lullabies that emerged later in the half 19th century. So this is uh, this is if you watch before Cinema One or you, you saw your Lola or Lolo watch them, um, Balitao is one of those um, songs people used to um um to sing when someone is courting or someone wants is trying are they trying to go to sleep so you call it balitao and then you also have the condiman uh the condiman is born because of resignation fatalis fatalism uh and of unrequited love so Kandiman is also very popular here. Well, not popular now, but it was popular before. All right. I cannot imagine Gen Z to, um, to sing Kandiman for some reason. <laughs> Can you imagine? But, ayun. So... Uh, but the love, but Filipinos not only uh, uh, see women as equal, but rather they also um, give praises to women. So if you remember from your history class, um, women, yung babaylan, the priestess or the, the chief thing is women, right? So, ayun. Um, also, I mean, ayun. The, even in music, they, they, the subject is also a woman, <laughs> beautiful woman. Writing system. So, uh, writing system. The Philippines, same thing with other. Um, with what happened to the culture of the Philippines, which, because of colonization, this was um, literally disappearing. I mean, no one could write and read it naturally, like in a book. So it's very hard. But in the Mangayans, the Mangyans of Mindoro has bamboo poles which are etched for by Bayan script, used for courtship and emotional concerns. And also in Southern Leyte, there, there was a huge stone contained in by Bayan, invocate for a safe journey to the sea. But by Bayan now is um, starting to take famous, but not in a, you know, on, on a novel or something but rather it's become famous for uh design because the script also or a logo so the script is also interesting in design but so far not all people are comprehensive our comprehensibility and um in by buying is not as good as how we read roman numerals or like this one these are roman numerals so or roman script 
So that's because during the Spanish colonization, um, the, the Spaniards bring, brought with them a printing technology in a fort, and then they also um, put on, they also used cate, ca, catechism, and they also gave out prayer books, uh, so in Spanish for their, so there was a lot to read and write, and so Filipinos were educated on how to read and write somehow with Spanish or with a script of Roman or the Roman script. Theater. There are a lot of theater forms formed locally and through colonization. And it is it was simultaneously formed or developed during uh, the development of literature and other art forms. Uh, one of these forms were uh, pageantry and pomp. Uh, if you remember, yung Raina Elena nyo, ayon, that is another form of pageantry, or but in a religious way. <laughs> so that is also unique here in the Philippines, yung Raina Elena, and uh, other religious processions that are embellished, embellished in carrozas that shows religious tableaus, saints, and scenes. So apparently those processions with uh, saints that, you know, um, uh, design saints and cross or Christ, then yung parade na may ganon, and then you go it all over town. Those are also um, because of the Spaniards and uh, I'm not sure with other countries, but it is also um, not all countries do that. The Sarsuela or Sarswells in the 19th century is a singing and dancing, a prose dialogue with the story is carried out in the song. So um, this is a Sarsuela, Sarsuela is also another form of theater, but is unique here in the Philippines. So it was uh, led by Severino Reyes and Hermogenes Ilagan and Honorota Atang del Rama. And then another form of theater is the Sinacolo. Uh, Sinacolo is uh, a theater that is like, that is about Christ's suffering. And it is also made in metaphor to the suffering of the Filipinos during uh, the Spanish colonial rule. Um, but the first Sinacolo ever written was in 1704 by Gaspar Aquino de Belen. And then it is um, divided into two main types. You have the Comedia de Santo and the Secular Comedia. So the Comedia of Santo is the life of Christ or any saint during church celebrations. And it, it, they used um, stylized uh, extravagant extravagant costumes and that they also choreograph the war scenes and then you also have secular comedia uh, which is also called moro moro if you heard of moro moro it is about naman uh, a love story between a christian hero and an islamic heroine that clashes and is done with a dance so I am. Um, the Comedia and the Senecolo actually survive until today. Um, and that there are also several families who align themselves to local parish church to stage. Uh, these scripts are handed down to children or appar apprentices 
which serves as a form of panata or the de devotion to the church. So, um, in other towns, naman, like Pampanga and Tarlac, uh, the Senacolo is the uh, full staging of the crucifixion. Sometimes it creates a major tourist and media attraction. And it also is done in Nueva Ecija, where you call it, well, you, when, but you call it Aragio or Aracchio. And then you dance, you dance. Um, I hope you're familiar with dance or with our native dance, although not everyone can dance, but at least you know what the Filipino dance looks like, right? <laughs> so uh, during the Galleon trade between the Mexico and the Philippines, the Mexican influence, uh, Cariñosa, Pandango, Polka, and Danza, and then it also brought the habanera, jota, jota or jota, and tango dances from Spain. So um, this was this, but our dances, Filipino dances, are not unique here in the Philippines, but rather it is also uh, inspired, or you could also see similarities of it in. Um, other Asian countries. But if you talk about um, dances that are like uh, connected to rituals, those are different because those are rituals naman. Like the Eitas and the, you know, the rain dance. <laughs> Remember that? So and there are different kinds of rituals that uh, um, but those are guarded from the tribe, so ayun. And somehow it's also weird that not a lot. It's not also assimilated to our current education system in uh, the elementary or in the high school. So ayun. Uh, about paintings naman, paintings are expressed through vi vi visual interpretation through biblical texts in Catholic devotion. Uh, paintings like hell, heaven, earth. Uh, example is a mural by Jose Dons, which is now placed in Pete Church, Paete, sorry, Paete Church in Laguna. So uh, this mural shows um, the map of the universe and a depiction of hell. And then you also have a painting by Esteban Villanueva that shows uh, the Basir revolt. So he made 14 paintings, but you could see there the during the paintings uh, in the paintings the Spanish is uh, um, won the war, but on the paintings there are the symbolism of the Halley's comet that occurs every a hundred years, if I'm right, and it is um, it is a sign for triumph for hope during that time and during the Basir revolt. And then you also have the printing system. So the printing system is uh, very important here in the Philippines because it was used to propagate uh, materials to help educate uh, native Filipinos to convert to Catholicism or Christianity. So um, usually those are uh, graphic art, very graphic art and printmaking. 
uh, the technique they used was xylography or wood print, woodcut printing. So they would carve it on a piece of wood and then um, put ink on the wood and then uh, place it on the paper. So what would happen is that uh, the exact image would uh, appear on paper and then it could, it can be um, done again to another paper and a lot more paper. So that is how the mode of reproduction or the printing system before. So, uh, another, um, what do you call this? Another example of this was the Doctrina Christiana. Uh, teachings of Christianity. This was printed in 1593 in Spanish and then in Tagalog, compiling song lyrics, commandments, sacraments, and other catechical material. Yun, this word. <laughs> kate, kate, chik. I, sorry, I can't. Uh, it also engraves the. So, yun, uh, the printing system, the woodcut printing, uh, is also important because not only it uh, serves as a process or technique on. Reprodu uh, reproducing Catho Catholic materials, you know, lang, because I can spell catechism or catechism, uh, ca cath uh, Catholic materials to, um, nasa na <laughs> it also uh, helps print or, uh, reproduce other um, materials that are used for non-secular or non-religious works like in government and uh, in newspaper, maps, so uh, books, science books and uh, novels and uh, so uh, the printing system was very important and in 1734 Jesuit priest Pedro Murillo Velarde with artist, artist Francisco Suarez and the engraver Nicolas de la Cruz Bagay made Carta Hidrográfica y Chorográfica de las Yas Filipinas. Uh, it, this is the scientific map of the Philippines and it was also uh, reprinted using the woodcut print. And then after that, there was the, the development of the lithography. So uh, the reproduction of the print is not only now black and white, but there are, you could produce it with colors. And here, uh, there was the start of the mass printing of newspapers and per periodicals. So even lithography now, Dito is, um, almost the same as what uh, printers use now in reproduction in newspapers. So it's a big machine and it prints or it's like the woodcutter barrel. It's more faster than the woodcutting because it's um, machine. Hindi na siya half manual. And another and one thing that uh, was uh, one thing that um, one thing that um, lithography was used was the uh, compilation of the Philippine plants, what which was made by Fun Father Manuel Blanco. Uh, that. Uh, he titled Flora de Filipinas, this one, in 1870, 1878. So this was very important 
the Florida Filipinas because it makes people see uh, that there are different kinds of flowers and or plants here in the Philippines that aren't even found in other countries. Rise of classes and privilege. So in 1834 to 1869, there was the opening of Manila and the Suez Canal, and it gave rise to economic benefits for the native elites. So there were commercial ventures open. So because of the rise of benefits, uh, native Filipinos were given a high class were able to pay for the education, were able to assimilate and blend with or receive the same benefits, almost the same benefits as those, those Spanish-born Filipinos. So uh, you call them ilustrado or enlightened ones because they were able to study in abroad. And then, because of the Lostrados, there was a development of music, like what Mar Marcelo Adonai did. He, um, he made compositions based on Western tradition of Gregorian chant. And then, and then, because of their people were able to afford more, they were able to have their own altar, they their own santos or virgina vir, or mother Mary virgin and urna. And then and then people were able to afford Bahay na Bato. Um, meaning they are able to, um, these are houses made of rocks or cement. So um, they have spacious interiors, commissioned portraits, paintings, miniature style, uh, which artists use to reveal meticulous and signify wealth and refinement of the sitter. So um, if you could still see this Bahay na Bato in in Intramuros, some of them, and in Bigan. There is also one in Quezon, but only a few. So, di ba yung, ano, yung pang poor Philippines, pang poor, <laughs> bahay kubo, and then the wealthy ones are bahay na bato, which is made of bato. So different prominent painting styles and their artists. You have Simon Flores painting portrait of the Kiazon family in 1800. You can see this in, I think, in National Museum. And then he also, he also there is also the Letras y Figuras. This is also an art form that is unique to the Filipinos. Um, the Letras e figuras are um, uh, miniature paintings uh, in, uh, instead of um, letters, block letters, there are uh, people inside it. So, ayan. and then you also have one Luna who won the gold for Spolarium and then Felix Resurrection Hidalgo for the Virgenes Cristianas Escueltas El Papulacho in Madrid Exposition. So they won in the European Academy and set global standards for the Filipinos. So um, the Spolarium Deba is also in the National Museum but um, Hidalgo, I think this is still in 
Spain? I'm not sure. So, Hidalgos, Vergenes, Cristianes, Esuertas, El Popolacho, and Fezaises, a woman held captive with counterparts, Philippines oppression under the Spanish rule. So, and then we go to the American period. Class, are you okay? Do you want a break? <laughs> This is a little bit long, but... Kaya pa, ma'am. Kaya pa? Okay. So, American period, a little, little things ch changed here. So, uh, if you remember in your Philippine history, uh, the Philippine Revolution was cut short because punta dito yung Americanos. Uh, a Treaty of Paris was made by Spain, with Spain, in, in effect, uh, Spain surrendered the Philippines to the United States. And then, the, and in 1899 to 1913, the bloody Philippine-American War began with the institution of the government. Uh, with this, because the war affect a lot of mental health in people, mental health issues in people. There were, they also went to, the Filipinos were able to um, release their emotions through art as well. So, but, but at the same time, Filipino playwrights were found themselves censored because of the issuance of the sedition law, which banned writing, printing, and publication of materials advocating Philippine independence. But the thing with American, American was that everyone, for America, for American, um, what they bring us here was education, um, during the Spanish time, education was not, you know, given for free. But for the Americans, what they gave us to, uh, you know, to try to win us back was education. So there was an, an eye, open, eye opener to new forms, the click, education, and modern art. So American was actually the one who brought uh, Western art or modern art here in the Philippines. But the thing is, uh, with the Americans, they, uh, from Spanish, the major, um, they taught us English. And from Spanish, poems and storybooks become English, and they taught us English. That's why um, Filipinos are good in English. <laughs> And then, so in less than a decade, Filipino began to write plays in English. And uh, one of those examples was uh, Modern Filipina by Lino Castillejo and G Jesus Araulo, which first Filipino play written in English. And then you also have Vaudeville and also Vaudeville. I, Vaudeville or is also here in the Philippines, naging Vaudeville siya. So it's like a collection of slapstick songs, dances, acrobatics, comedy, skits, chorus, girls, magic act, and uh, stand-up comic acts. Um, and during this time span, some of these performances had hidden messages to the uh, guerrillas. But after the war, the Boda Bill deteriorated into vulgar shows. And after none, it died away because of the popularity of film and television. The click.
So um, another thing that Americans brought is uh, new patterns or new ideas for architecture, for health, for governance. So um, Daniel Burham, American government designed Manila and Baguio. So if you remember Burham Park, Shanag design on and also Manila. And one of those uh, neoclassic architecture examples are the false office and the legislative building and the National Art Gallery. And then And then ito yung ibang Filipino at architects that were able to design buildings. Uh, you have Th Thomas Mapua, Juan Arellano, Andres Luna de San Pedro, and Antonio Toledo. Toledo. Um, these are naman are um, very, there are elite. Kasi they got their training in US or in Europe. And then in form of education, uh, University of Philippines School of the Fine Arts was opened in 1909, and it has a demand of commercial design. Uh, Fernando Marsolo became a professor in UP School of Fine Arts. And then you also have Guglielmo Tolentino, so uh, for, wait lang, Fernando Marsolo, siya yung nag, uh, it became also the uh, Marsolo School kasi he had a distinctive uh, technique or way to show Filipinas or the Philippines as, um, you know, um, in a countryside, happy, gardening or gardening or picking mangoes or um and uh, nagpapalay so it's very romanticized but uh that was because of fernando marsolo <laughs> and then guillermo talentino um he made the sculpture of um the oblation the symbol of up so it was in 1958 and it's bronze cast and he also made the Bonifacio monument in Calaocan. Sorry, I'm going to take to drink water for a bit. And then you also have the academic here that refers to ah, sila, si, uh, Fernando Marsolo, Guillermo. And because of the um, establishment of the University of the Philippines School of Fine Arts, the Filipinos were able to learn academic painting. So it's a tradition of painting and sculpture. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Wherein you can hardly see the uh, brush strokes. And then, and then pastor Im images of Idades, the builders. Um, from the conservative Filipina to the um, to the revealing oblation, Edades also made the builders, which is made of dull colors, but it is also a shift of treatment of form and the subject matter. And then, like I said, uh, uh, the Americans were able to produce, uh, introduce to us uh, the modern art.
So um, examples of artists, Filipino artists, uh, were Botong Francisco, and he made a mural called Filipino Struggles Through History and is now located in Manila City Hall. And another is Galo Campo, where he made Brown Madonna. So Idades, Francisco, and Ocampo are the triumvirate of modern art here in the Philippines. And then these are your 13 modern artists. Arsenio Capilli, Bonifacio Cristobal, Demetro Diego, Carlos Francisco, Cesar Legaspi, Diosdado Lorenzo, Anita Monsaisay Ho, Galong, Galo Campo, Hernando R. Ocampo, Jose Par Pardo, and Ricarte Purug Ganen. Uh, some of them are still alive. And then you have the Japanese and post-war republic. The Japanese uh, influenced the Philippine art uh, in a way that there was less modern art. The modern art project began to slow down and the conservatives continued to producing art in Kalibapi or the Kapisanan sa Paglilingkod ng Bagong Pilipinas. So uh, the Japanese were able to instill to us uh, some Japanese um, styles, but it didn't left a much uh, deep interest here in the Philippines. So, wait long. So uh, the Japanese forces built a formation called a uh, Greater East Asia Cult Prosperity Sphere, but it was rejected by the Western, but it, uh, it gave out to publications, it gave birth to publications Shinseki and the Liwaiwai and the Tribune. And, uh, and then images, text, music uh, became uh, scrutinized also when it's subversive or anti-Japanese. These texts that are um, anti-Japanese, it leads to uh, torture or even death. So like uh, the Americans and also the Spaniards, to be honest, there was a... Uh, uh censor on uh on materials or speech or art so but at the same time the japanese also employed local artists and cultural workers uh you call them hodobu, hodobu. so um you have the national artist Felipe h de leon who was commanded at the point of a gun to write awit sa paglika ng bagong Pilipinas. But this wasn't a uh, long live. And then, kasi we still use lupang hinirang. And then, and then Amor Solo still was able to paint uh, you have the harvest scene and the rice painting. And then you also have genre paintings that are produced showing neutral relationship between the Filipinos and the Japanese. So you have the Christine Lopez, the study of the Eta. And But also other artists wants to show uh, the opposite of peace, but rather the after effects of war, like Amor Solo's bombing of Intendencia and the ruins of the Manila Cathedral. You can see this in 
a national museum as well. And then there are works that show the horrors, like I thought Rossi's in Paco and Doom Family in 1945. This is not in the National Museum. Um, but yeah. So other modern styles are Alice Guillermo, that who reflected national identity while rising from ashes to war. She also write your popular Philippine history. So other uh, artists are Manan Sala, Legaspi, H. Ocampo. They were associated with no, no, uh, neorealism. Mansala's popular was The Beggar, The Two Bad Rankers, Ligaspi's Gadgets, and Bar Girls, and then Ocampo, The Contrast, and then Genesis. So some, itong Genesis, this is um, located in CCP. So like uh, other, like in the West, there were there is like a war of ideologies between conservatives and moderns. So like Amorsolo and Tolentino were conservatives because they show um, a Filipino Filipinas in um, very conserve way. A traditional way and they it is like an image of Mara, Maria Clara while moderns like Edades would show um, what would happen if in the during the war and stuff um, artists with continued conservative tradition walk out of protests and exhibited their works on the streets and others naman refer to, so ayan, other studios naman, there are studios naman in Manila, Mabini Manila. And you call them Mabini painters. And so you pick Diliman campus naman. Uh, there is a church of holy sacrifice that is employed concrete as a primary, primary material with rounded or parabolic forms. And then you have also an example of Chapel of St. Joseph, the worker of Victorias Negro against the Angry Christ Chapel. Or shows an Angry Christ. And then you also have abstraction. So, um, uh, Artist, Filipino artist who does this was national artist Jose Hoya. And then you also have two 70s contemporary. So um, during this time, Fernand, Fernando Marco, Ferdinand Marcos and Imelda Marcos rise to the seat of the presidency. And they were able to uh, build projects, even in spite of the poverty in the Philippines, and and the chaos of national chaos and emergency proportions. Uh, they were uh, they uh, they 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 uh, signed the martial law. They declared martial law, and which envision new society or bagong lupunan. So during the martial law, um, freedom of artists was also censored, but somehow it was also propagated and implemented through art, culture, fine arts, architecture, interior design, and such, and many others.
So during the Marcos regime, um, there was uh, an optimism through in the beginning because they have uh, index of progress, refinement, they were able to conduct radical experiments and they were able to influence national identity and love for the country. And uh, they propagated these to intricate net network and institutions through pre-modern, uh, vernacular, modern, and international art through anthems and songs and other forms of art. And then CCP, Cultural Center of the uh, Philippines, they were able to also um, uh, make this in 25 June 1966. Uh, the CCP was uh, designed by Leandro Loxin, and it is a modernist building that's crossed between a Baha'i Kubo and an art bro, minimalist structure to high art. So inside the CCP, you have the Fox Art Theater, the Philippine International Convention, or PICC, uh, Tahanan Filipino or Coconut Palace, and the Manila uh, film fest international film festival which is rival of Keynes. so the ccp supported artists by providing venues and grants and serves as a validating entity of major awards to national artists so um it also gave authority on modern art and had an avant-garde composer like uh, national artist Jose Maceda. And then you also have uh, Roberto Chabet as the first director. Um, he is like a fluxus artist and became an establishment figures and objects is a group of tradition uh, in CCP, which is like a tore up copy of coffee book table to Philippine contemporary art into the trash bin. So, again. So, developmental art uh, in 1971 to 1977, there is an exposure phase wherein advanced art it became experimental in nature with the use of sand, junk, iron, non-art materials as law, lumber, raw lumber, and rocks. So with the developmental art, people were shocked, scared, delighted, and satisfied by the notions of art did not agree. But under Albanian's dictatorship, uh, CCP somehow reached out to regions outside Manila beyond through art workshops, art outreach programs to PAS. And then you also have social realism. Our social realism is a significant strand of intense political ferment in the 70s and 80s. Um, this is through academic paintings that... Uh, uh, the showcase what it is like in uh, Philippines or through advocacies. So they use various mediums, techniques, and styles that was referred to as protest art for social pol political issues. So the struggles that a realist approaches is the conscious with regards for oppressed and underrepresented masses. So the common uh, the common topic for social realism is um, the poor, the underprivileged, those who are uh, victims of war, of rape, or other uh, challenges. So it commonly tackles the plight in the marginalized inequality in the forms of repression. So that's it. Do you have any more questions? Guys? 
wala ko. Doon ma. Doon ma. So, um, if you don't have any questions, I would, um, how about the plate? I wait. If you don't have any questions, I will dismiss you early. <laughs>